We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Welcome back or welcome to our channel. It's Serena from the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. Today, I wanted to start a series of book hauls. Um, I thought it would be nice for me to sit down and just walk through like cube by cube the books that we have on our library. I feel like I'm always extremely curious about what people have in their home libraries and I wanted to keep a nice account of what we currently have in ours. Um, I feel like this will be a good way for you to get to know <laughs> us more, the things that we like to pick up and why and where do we get them from and that type of thing. You can chime in and let us know which things you have on your shelves, which things you were eyeing, which things you have read already. Just kind of open up the conversation that's all about books. You will notice that we have a ton of fiction on our shelves. Um, I have some resources. Well, we use a lot of fictional books as resources because it opens up conversation and all of those things that I can get into more detail in, in other videos. So we're just going to jump right into it. I feel like I try my best to sort and separate by category, but we will see how that goes, friends. Um, I'm also not really great at walking through the synopsis of a book, so I will be reading The Dust Jacket and just kind of chiming in on why I decided to pick it up from reading that um, synopsis, and then we'll go on from there. I estimate that this little series of our book hauls is going to be around 15 or so videos. Um, I just feel like I always love a good book haul, but I'm not heavy into the consumerism Part of that which says that we need to get books and get them now um, these books we have been collecting over the last several years actually a lot of them we have um, added to our library in the last couple of years um, but I have many on the shelves that I got when they were much much younger when we first started homeschooling and I just think that's really important to note is that your collection of books, your collection of resources comes over time and that is the way it should be. It shouldn't be an all out binge of books, you know, every single week. But this is truly what a book haul is. You just kind of collect them a little bit here, a little bit there um, and add them to your library. So the first set I have, I think they're contemporaries. I try to do my best in going through our Notion app um, to sort and separate and just kind of make a note of what was actually belonging to which genre. But I think <laughs> that I'm going to pretty much have a good account for them, but I may be off. Who knows? We'll see. So the first book I have is Sarah and the Search for Normal by Wesley King. When I got home, I read my list of normal rules before bed, whispering like usual so my parents wouldn't hear, but it felt a little different today. I had plans for the weekend, me, Sarah. My stomach did a flip-flop, but I realized something. I jumped out of bed, turned the lights on, and grabbed my list. Flipping to the second page, I took out a pen and grinned. Number 19, make a friend, and then it's crossed out. That was all I needed. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that this book is all about her search for what normal is. Um, she clearly has some things about her that would lead her to believe that she was not normal. And I love that. I love anything that explores those type of things, especially with my kids being the age that they are, where they are exploring what is normal and um, I'm pretty sure that Cameron read this one already and I'm excited to read it and chime in on the conversation. Okay, so I do think this has some representation of mental health, which is really important. So we've got that. The next contemporary I have is What Goes Up. It explores the security of friendship, the permanence of family, and the comfort that comes from learning the place where you belong. So yeah, I don't know too much about it. All I know is that the reviews that I looked up said it was super, super funny. So we're gonna go with that because the kids love to have a good laugh while they're reading a good book. All right, next up I have The Nerviest Girl in the World. This is not a typical book that I would pick up, but this is one that was on um, a list of books in the Brave Writer. I think it was the DART program. Uh, a few years ago, I purchased the DART program. We haven't really used it, used it, 
well enough to say to give any thorough review or anything but i know that we're going to enjoy it when it fits in so there was a list of 12 books that i picked up in conjunction or to go along with that brave writer program and this was one of them the nerviest girl in the world so pearl lives on a ranch where her chores include collecting eggs and feeding Henri ostriches she knows a thing or two about horses just like three her three older brothers one day pearl's brothers get a job doing stunts for a new form of entertainment called moving pictures. They're the Daredevil Donnelly brothers, a death-defying cowboy trio. Before she knows it, Pearl has stumbled into being a stunt girl herself and dreams of becoming a star. The only problem is her mother, who has no idea what she's up to, and let's just say she wouldn't be too happy to find out that Pearl's been jumping out of burning buildings in her spare time. So it sounds like fun, and we'll see how we enjoy it. Um, there's always a thing around here where you're just kind of trying to figure out when is something an independent read? When is something a bingo read for us? Um, which is our seven day uh, reading challenge, family reading challenge. When is something a buddy read? When is something a read aloud? And this definitely seems like one of those read aloud type of stories. So excited to read this one. Okay, so the next category that I have is historical fiction. You will see over the span of these haul books that we have quite a bit of historical fiction. Um, it is my favorite genre. It is my oldest son Cameron's favorite genre. Um, and then the, the others enjoy it as well. But uh, the first one I have is by Lauren Woke. It's Echo Mountain. Set in the Great Depression, Ellie's family is forced to leave their home in a town to start over in the untamed forest of nearby Echo Mountain. Ellie has found a welcome freedom and a love of the natural world in her new life on the mountain. But there is little joy even for Ellie as her family struggles with the aftermath of an accident that has left her father in a coma. An accident unfairly blamed on Ellie. So I will tell you this without getting into the rest of the synapses. Um, I really enjoy when stories take on, um, whenever they make mention of being able to explore different settings or environments that are nothing like where we live, I think that is a bonus and that's kind of where I was feeling like we were going to end up going in this book. Um, this is one of the fourth book that we have by Lauren Woke, that's another thing that we really like to do is collect books by the same author and we end up doing somewhat of an author study to compare and contrast that author's writing. So yeah, I won't get into any more detail about this book because I don't know and we like to keep it that way, but Echo Mountain, excited to read this one. The next one that I have is by Vera Hiranandani. I think I'm saying that correctly. If I'm not, I'm sorry, and I will get it right later on, <laughs> is The Night Diary. So this is a historical fiction. On the eve of her 12th birthday, Nisha receives a journal, a place to record the thoughts she can never seem to say aloud as she starts to see the world through older eyes. So just off top right there, <laughs> I'm intrigued because any story that includes um, documentation of thoughts and feelings in a journal is like really um, intriguing to me and I feel like something that the kids can really take a hold of while they're reading through stories. Uh, Nisha, who is changing, she doesn't even recognize her country anymore. It's 1947 and India, newly freed from British rule, is being divided into two countries, Pakistan and India. Most people are killed crossing borders as tensions among Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Sikhs, and others flare. Nisha doesn't know which side she's supposed to be on or why she has to choose after losing her mother who died giving birth. She can't imagine losing her homeland too. All of that is something that I would love to explore with the kids. So mama was Muslim, but now she's gone. Papa is Hindu and says it's no longer safe for them to stay in Pakistan. And so Nisha and her family become refugees and embark on a dangerous journey by train and by foot to reach their new home on the other side of the border. So I've had, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, my oldest has read it so far and enjoyed it. And I'm excited to read this one along with them. So I have The War I Finally Won. This is historical fiction. I'm pretty sure it's around World War II. Ada's club foot has been fixed at last and she knows now that she is not what her mother said she was damaged and deranged. This is the second book in the series um, following the war that saved my life and we have both. 
Um, another book that belonged in our Brave Writer Dart program, I can't remember which program it was, but this one is by Pam Munoz Ryan, who is also an author that we happen to have, I'm pretty sure, all of her books, but Manana Land. We are now into the fantasy and magical realism section here. Um, so this is a story about courage and self-discovery. Um, about This is a story about stories, um, especially the legend about a mythical gatekeeper who can guide brave travelers on a journey into tomorrow. If Max could see tomorrow, he would know if he will make Santa Maria's celebrated football team and whether he'll ever meet his mother who disappeared when he was a baby. He longs to know more about her, but Papa won't talk. So when Max uncovers a buried family secret involving an underground network of guardians who lead people fleeing danger to safety, he decides to seek answers on his own. So I like when stories like this are coupled with some magical realism. So I'm excited to read this one. I'm pretty sure that my son already read it, but that back cover art is so beautiful. All right, next up in the magical realism, in the magical realism department slash fantasy, I have A Wish in the Dark. I think this includes um, a boy on the run, a girl determined to find him. All light in Chatana is created by one man, the governor, who appeared after the great fire to bring peace and order to the city for Pong, who was born in Namwon prison the magical lights represent freedom and he dreams of the day he will be able to walk among them um i think this one stood out for me because this is only the second book that i have come across that includes um an unorthodox type of story such as being born in a prison a wish in the dark Next up in my fantasy section i have the borrowers i got this one like very early on in our homeschool journey and i really enjoy having uh these types of collections all in one place so this actually includes five books in the series um it includes the borrowers the borrowers a field the borrowers afloat the borrowers aloft and the borrowers avenge that was a lot to say um by mary norton so i guess this would be considered classic would it i'm on that fence about what are the things that are considered classic right now but i'm pretty sure that this is considered um a classic uh so this is about a miniature clock family and uh, they live in a big world among the human beings from whom they borrow everything they need from matchbox dresses postage stamp artwork um and trinket boxes for such tiny people they have some not so tiny adventures now lifelong enthusiasts and new fans can escape into the small world of the borrowers in this collection of her classic illustrated stories i really like picking up these nice thick collections of these books and just working our way through them you know as we are able oftentimes classics are not ones that we generally like to jump into or not the easiest to jump into as the language has evolved and all of many those other things so i would rather take classics kind of like low and slow and this is a really good way um to do that when they're in these collections and then the next one i have the last one in my fantasy magical realism list is Leilani of the Distant Sea. Erin Entrada Kelly is an author that is one of Cameron's favorites. Um, so we have pretty much every book I think she's written except for maybe one. I love the beginning of this synopsis. It says, sometimes you choose yourself. Leilani faces an impossible future. Her mother has fallen ill and is likely unlikely to recover. Um, her stepfather and stepbrother are cruel and vindictive. There is only cleaning and cooking and mending and errands for someone such as Leilani. Um, she faces an impossible task. She only wanted to save Toppy. She only wanted to help her best friend, but Everything is her fault. Everything. The rain coming now in torrents and causing unspeakable disaster is all her fault. So Leilani does what only one girl on the island has ever done before. She slips into a small scouting boat and sets out across the veiled sea looking for a different future. That other girl never returned. Will Leilani. Okay. I'll get better. Next up, I have two more classics. I have Mary Poppins. Um, I got this one. Whenever you come across a nice 
collector style edition of a classic. I try to really grab onto it. Um, so we love this copy of Mary Poppins. We got it from a discount bookstore and we have read it a couple of times so far. Mary Poppins is an interesting one, which I can go into later on because it's definitely nothing like the movie, but we love us some Mary Poppins. Um, the next one I have is the Phantom Tollbooth. You guys, I really wish there was a classic, like a nice edition of this one. This is actually one of my homeschool favorites. I love this book and I can probably do another video all about the reasons why, but this is my copy of the Phantom Tollbooth. So, a journey to lands beyond. For Milo, everything is a bore. When a toll booth mysteriously appears in his room, he drives through only because he's got nothing better to do. But on the other side, things seem different. Milo visits the Island of Conclusions. You get there by jumping. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Um, learns about time from a ticking watchdog named Toc, and even embarks on a quest to rescue Rhyme and Reason. Somewhere along the way, Milo realizes something astonishing. Life is far from dull. In fact, it's exciting. In fact, in fact, it's exciting beyond his wildest dreams. This story will forever be one of my favorites. So next up, I have three of the books in The Airbender, the Avatar um, series. I've got Avatar, The Last Airbenders, The Promise. Avatar is The Last Airbenders, The Rift. I've got The Search. So we actually purchased these copies for the kids for Christmas. I got one for each one of them to add to their collection. They love the Airbender series and these books pick up, pick up right where the um, series left off and they love them. Um, I really like them to have a nice graphic novel collection and that's a whole nother, um, that's a whole other book video that we can do to kind of chat about graphic novels and how challenging they can be to find ones that fit what you were really looking for. But um, we love this series. Now I just have a little stack of picture books that I will toss in here. So I've got The Queen of Physics, How Wu Xin Zheng Helped Unlock the Secrets of the Atom. So I typically like to include these obviously in science, but then also in math. I just think that them reading stories of people who have championed those spaces are really inspiring to them and it helps them to go down a little rabbit hole to find out more about what they discovered. It's just everything. So this picture book is so beautiful. And I think another thing that is really highly like underrated is the fact that you can use the back of picture books. You can use their suggested reading, their um, bibliography, and their timelines to really help you kind of add to your studies. Uh, the next one I have is really super cute. It's about a shy ghost named Gustavo. Gustavo the shy ghost. So Gustavo is a ghost, a very shy one. More than anything, he wants to make a friend. So I love the illustrations in this book and the, um, the colors are like beautiful and the story is really sweet. The next one I have is actually a word list. Has a couple of words thrown in there, but more so a wordless book by Pete Oswald called Hike. And this book is really beautiful. Um, I really happen to love wordless books in our homeschool and lives. It's about a father and a child. They head out on a hike, keeping a cherished family tradition alive. Next one I have is by one of our favorites, uh, Vanessa Brantley Newton, um, Just Like Me. This is a book of, it says like a paper chain made of every single color. We link up to level up and aspire to go higher and higher. Won't you be a link in our paper chain for change? Um, I really just try to pick up every book that she's ever illustrated is my goal. So I love this one. It's a beautiful book with beautiful poetry to go along with it. So, and then the last one that I have is Miriam's Magic, the story of mathematician Miriam Mirzakani, if I'm saying that correctly. Again, just having like a stash of books that are all about math is my favorite, but math attached to people who love it so much is my favorite. And I love that math stories often start with them not really loving math. 
So this is one of those stories. But this book is beautiful. The illustrations are beautiful. And that's the last one that I have, you guys. <laughs> so let me know, you guys, do you have any of these? Have you read any of these or any of these on your list of things to watch out for? Just tell us all the things in the comment section below. That is my first haul <laughs> um, of this series. And hopefully I'll get a little quicker with getting through these hauls because there's a lot to go through. But remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal, as always, is to live and to learn. Bye. Uh. Don't forget to subscribe!